I read so much. I listened to so many podcasts. I watched so many YouTube videos. But at the end of the day, until you experience it, you don't know if you're really going to know. Dogs don't talk. And so I I was really anxious. And I'm like, is this happening? Is this not? Is it my imagination? Um, am I being overly cautious? But she was definitely not acting herself. And my husband was kind of like laid back about it. Yeah, you know, she's not going to go into labor yet. No. And mind you, Sunday was our Rosh Hashanah. And I really barely cooked for Rosh Hashanah. I had had a crazy week the week before. Um, besides for like my shifts were crazy. I was in Boston one of those days. And I had a, a family wedding out of town. It was just a crazy, crazy week. Giving birth is one of the most significant events of your life. Sadly, the joy that you should feel can often be replaced with anxiety and helplessness instead. As a labor and delivery nurse, I'm revealing insider information to educate you, reassure you, and decrease your fear. In this podcast, you'll hear empowering birth stories and experts weigh in on a range of topics. Being Jewish also has me exploring Judaism's influence on the reproductive experience. However, I speak to anyone wishing to navigate their journey with more joy and confidence. I'm your host, Hani Fingerer, and you're listening to the Happy Birthway Podcast. Welcome to episode 57 of the Happy Birthway Podcast. I feel like over the last few episodes, every time I start one, I apologize for why I haven't uh, put up an episode more regularly, but this time I have a pretty good excuse. Some of you might know that I have a beautiful English cream golden retriever. Her name is Honey, and she is a little bit over two years old, and This week, she gave birth to a litter of gorgeous, beautiful puppies, eight boys, and one girl. And so I want to tell you a little bit about her birth and her pregnancy. I haven't mentioned it on the podcast as of now, as of yet. And um, okay, so first things first, dogs are pregnant for, get this, between 61 and 63 days. That's it. So this was a an intentional breeding. She is a purebred English cream golden retriever. We have a pedigree for her, which goes back, I think it's three generations, to make sure that there's no inbreeding. She is registered with AKC, which is the American Kennel Club, um, and they are an organization that ensures that uh, you know the breeding standards are met um, and that she is indeed a purebred. We bred her with another beautiful, gorgeous English cream golden retriever, Marlin, um, who's also same like her, AKC certified, etc. And, um, you know, we thought long and hard about whether to breed, whether to not breed, ethics and things like that. But at the end of the day, adoption of dogs is not for everyone. You know, uh, especially newer dog owners or those who have little kids or who have little kids frequenting their homes um, and they want a dog that is predictable, whose temperament they know and who's health cleared. And they, you know, know that this dog is going to be a healthy dog. Um, The way we're doing it as breeders is that we are actually giving a health guarantee for our dogs for one year. And so, um, you know, Honey is just an amazing dog. Like I, I can't, I can't say it any other way. Her personality is just amazing. Golden Retrievers are great, phenomenal family dogs, but sometimes they tend to be a little bit more like you know energetic. Um, and Honey is just the perfect, perfect balance. She's not crazy energetic. She's you know has a, a medium level of energy, and she could play with the kids and everything. But she's not like insanely wild. Um, she's amazing with all kids. All the kids from my neighborhood come and play with her all the time. And my kids play with her, and my little one loves to play dress up with her. And she completely tolerates everything. And I just I never hear a sound from her. So she's just a really good personality. She's intelligent. She's very easy to train, eager to please, and she's gorgeous. And so we decided that we are going to do this. I am a labor and delivery nurse. And uh, before we made the decision whether to breed or not, I told my husband, he was the one that actually came up with the idea. 
And I was so skeptical. I'm like, uh, go buy yourself a reading book, read it from cover to cover, and then get back to me. And so that's what he did. And he says to me after, like, wow, you know, you're right. Like, it's a lot of work. And then I read the book because, you know, it was just lying around. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I want to do this. Like, this is what I want to do. So that was kind of like the deal breaker for th- this decision. Um, I was on board. And so this is a family project that we're doing together. But obviously, given my background, I am very heavily invested and involved in this. And so dogs, the way it works is is they're they're not fertile as frequently as humans are. Um, some animals are, are fertile like during seasons, like springtime, you know how we consider springtime um, mating season. Uh, dogs are not like that. Every dog follows a different cycle and they get what's called a heat. Um, and during this heat, in the beginning of the heat, they bleed. That's how you know that the heat has started. And about 11 to 14 days in is when they ovulate and when they can get pregnant. And uh, dogs' heat on average can be somewhere between six months to 12 months. That means some dogs will get their heat only once every 12 months. So they're only fertile once every 12 months. And some dogs will get their heat every six months. Those are the dogs that are usually, you know, smaller. And so we we had to breed Honey when she was in heat. And that was in the summer. We bred her with another gorgeous English cream golden retriever. His name is Marlin. And um, we didn't we wouldn't know if she was pregnant or not for four and a half weeks. Right. So she's pregnant for dogs are pregnant for nine weeks total. And we had to wait until about four and a half weeks to uh, be able to confirm her pregnancy with an ultrasound. So like throughout the summer, I didn't really know whether the mating took or not. And um, so at the end of the summer, we went to get her an ultrasound. We're seeing a reproductive vet. Yes, they have that. It's called a reproductive vet. And, um, you know, they just they specialize in everything with dog breeding, reproduction, etc. And then they see the puppies for the care for, you know, once once the puppies are born. And so we went and I have a beautiful video of um, I took my little one with us. So it was myself, my husband and our youngest. And um, we were able to see that she was pregnant. It was really, really fun. Um, and I remember like thinking I'm going to have this whole prenatal consult uh, with the vet. And he's just like, all right, make an appointment the week before her whopping date. And, uh, you know, for an x-ray to determine how many puppies there are. We'll see you then. And I was like, wait, wait, like, am I going to get a class? Like, I had all these questions to ask about, like, what to feed her and just things like that, what to prepare with. Um, and it's just interesting to me because, I, like, I get the feel that, I mean, this makes sense. Okay, it's not a human, it's a dog. But, like, it's just so much more casual with the with with dogs giving birth. Like, there's no thousand prenatal visits. There's no, like, even the books. They're not very thorough. Like, there's no online courses. I mean, I was able to finally find one. But it's not, like, this prevalent thing. And it seems like people just breed their dogs without thinking about it too much. But I just, I guess I know what I know. So I had all of my questions. And the vet tech there was really amazing. The vet tech function, functions in, like, the same capacity as a nurse to humans. Um, And so she was phenomenal. She answered tons of our questions and still continues to answer a lot of our questions. And so we went through the pregnancy with Honey. It was a healthy pregnancy. And the week before her whelping date, so this is really also novel and interesting to me. I never knew this and it seemed strange, but they x-ray dogs. This is the standard of care to x-ray a dog a week before they are due. And the reason for that is that we really want to have a precise count of how many puppies there are in her. And ultrasound is not accurate in doing that. And the reason why it's important to know how many puppies there are is not because we want to know how many we're going to sell. It's because when a dog gives birth, they're giving birth to a lot of babies at once and we want to make sure that there are no puppies that are left behind we want to make sure that their labor continues that there's no stall of labor between puppies we want to make sure that they're not getting too tired and unable to birth 
subsequent puppies. Um, and if there's a puppy that's stuck, we need to know. So if we don't have an exact count, it can be really hard to know what's going on and you can get help sooner if you know that there are more puppies in there and that something's not right. And so at the ultrasound, the vet told us that he's thinking somewhere between five and eight puppies. That's what it looked like. So that's what we had in our head. And so we went to the vet the week before her whelping date and they came and told us that she had somewhere between 10 and 12 puppies in there. So like that freaked me out. Um, I wasn't expecting such a large litter and the larger dogs litter gets, the more risks there are involved. Um, like that sweet spot is somewhere between five and eight puppies. So I was kind of happy with that. Um, and I also said, what, 10 to 12? But you told us that like it's supposed to be precise. Like is it 10, 11 or 12? And they said that when it gets to somewhere like 10 account of 10 puppies in a, a pregnant dog, then they may start seeing shadows on the x-ray and it may seem like maybe there's a little bit more. So it's not as precise as if there were fewer puppies. Um, so again, that was also like a little bit anxiety provoking because now like, am I going to know if they all came out? Am I not? Let me tell you a little bit about her birth story. We thought that Honey was due on Rosh Hashanah. So Rosh Hashanah was Monday and Tuesday. So her whelping date, her whelping due date, according to our calculations, was Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Um, and today, as I record this, it is Thursday. So like, I was kind of hoping that she'd give birth like yesterday. Well, either we miscalculated, which I don't think we miscalculated, but the earliest she could have ovulated um, you know, from when her heat started and it looks like she gave birth the earliest that would have been normal, you know, not, not prematurely, which would be 61 days. Um, so I was completely caught off guard, but starting Friday night before Shoshana, she was like just pacing and pacing and, um, you could see that her personality, like her her whole entire temperament changed because the last like week or two, dogs are just, they, they just lay around. They're just very lazy. Like they, you know, they have a harder time moving. They're not as energetic. And um, that's how she was. And then suddenly like all night long, she didn't sleep. Also, we had been taking her temperature. Dog's temperature baseline is about 101. And when they start to um, get very close to whelping, which is what's uh, called labor and birth for dogs, when they get close to whelping, their temperature drops significantly to the 98s. And so Thursday, her temperature was 100.5. That's only the first time that we started taking her temp because I wasn't expecting for her to give birth so early. And then, so Friday, like right before Shabbos, my husband takes her temperature. And mind you, it's a rectal temp. And um, she's like not very fond of getting rectal temps done. So she was kind of like, you know, uh, trying to run away. And he got a reading of 90.8, which she hadn't been showing any signs or anything. So I just attributed to, okay, like he didn't get it in well and she ran away soon. Um, but again, it was a little bit like, okay, you know, just a piece of information that we kept in the back of our heads. And I'm like, no, nah, it's impossible. Like it can't be, but I was, I, I did get a little bit anxious. And then Friday night she was pacing. Like usually she sleeps in, um, a crate and, um, lately she's been sleeping in our room just because I feel like with everything going on, I want her to be more comfortable. And, um, she was just pacing back and forth, pacing back and forth, like panting, like just couldn't get comfortable. Um, and this like basically continued throughout the day. She had some periods where she was resting, but she was just like panting and pacing. And every time I took her outside, she had to dig like she was digging frantically. And that's what's called nesting. The hence where that whole entire, you know, concept that we say nesting comes from, um, where a dog instinctually, the animal instinct is, is when they live in the wild, they dig a ditch for them to birth their litter in and to keep their litter in there and to protect their offspring in there. So every time we took her outside, she would like frantically dig. I have about three ditches right now, three dirt ditches in front of my house. Her uh, favorite spot for her 
biggest ditch was right under my porch steps. And um, yeah, there's a, do- a giant ditch in there right now. So I have to get all of that re filled um and so she would run under the steps like when we took her out and i i was so anxious that she was just gonna give birth there you know like you, you i i read so much i listened to so many podcasts i watched so many youtube videos but at the end of the day until you experience it you don't know if you're really gonna know dogs don't talk and so i i was really anxious and i'm like is this happening is this not is it my imagination Um, Am I being overly cautious? But she was definitely not acting herself. And my husband was kind of like laid back about it. Yeah, you know, she's not going to go into labor yet. No. And mind you, Sunday was going to be our Rosh Rosh Hashanah. And I really barely cooked for Rosh Hashanah. I had had a crazy week the week before. Um, Besides for like my shifts were crazy. I was in Boston one of those days for uh, visits for my daughter. And I um, there was like another day that was like a crazy day. Oh, I had a, a family wedding out of town. It was just a crazy, crazy week. So I didn't have time to cook at all. And um, I, I I got pretty good at like making simple stuff and, you know, cooking even Arab, just Arab yantif. Um, I had a couple of things in the freezer. But for the most part, I was planning on making the bulk of yantif on Sunday. Uh, and so on job is I'm starting to get a little bit uneasy with what's happening. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like. Is she going to have the babies like, you know, on Sunday, which would be exciting, but also which would be crazy. And how am I going to do it? But whatever, you know, I just like went with the flow. I did not let her out of my sight. Anyway, Shabbos was over and she's like starting to act even more frantic, like more in a frenzy. You know, she was under control, but she was definitely pacing around the room, walking back and forth. And um, I I was uncomfortable leaving her. Like I just I didn't want her to just pop a, a puppy out in my bedroom floor. So we set up a whelping box. Oh, and that's another thing I forgot to tell you. I had ordered all the supplies, and they came basically like on Thursday and Friday. And we were just setting up. There's something called a whelping pen or a whelping box, which is. Um, a, a special box or you know pen, if you will, that's for dogs who are going to be whelping. And why it uh, has that distinct name is is because there's a ledge or like a little bumper that's um, on the lower part of it of, of this like pen, this box. And that way, if the mother leans back against the wall, that bumper makes uh, keeps a gap between her body and the rest of the wall, so that if a puppy, a little 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 squirmy puppy, which now I can totally understand the value of that so if a little squirmy puppy tries to like go on 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 the side of her between her and the wall she won't squish that puppy and so like we had to set that up and you know we set that up I think it was Thursday evening and then you have to get the dog used to it so that they'll actually want to give birth there and I was depending on having some time like I'm talking about resuscitative equipment everything literally came like right before Shabbos and we had time to open the packages and like um, I don't even know maybe some of the stuff even came on Shabbos so like we're we're you know we're lucky that it came when it did and um that that you know she gave birth when she did so uh it you know Shabbos is over and um we're getting her used to her whelping box we had it over Shabbos so we were able to like take her in and out and sit with her and everything like that it's a cute nice little box and that's where the puppies live basically for the next two weeks um and so you know she was in and out of the whelping box I, I was thinking if she's in labor let me keep her you know, in the whopping box as much as I can. And at a certain point, I realized, like, if she's going to be having her babies, I should probably, like, start cooking for Yantif, even though I'm not, like, I don't like to stay up at 1 a.m. and cook like some people I know do. Um, But I said at this point, I I don't know what's going to happen. So I didn't even have all the ingredients. And, um, like, I was planning on doing an Instacart order and having them delivered Sunday morning and, you know, cooking. So whatever I had uh, that available, whatever ingredients I did have available, I started to cook. And uh, my older daughter, my teen daughter, was with me. And she was kind of, you know, helping Honey. Like, Honey was panting, and and she, she looked uncomfortable. She wasn't crying. She wasn't screaming. She just didn't look comfortable. Um my husband went to sleep. He's like, ah, she's not giving birth tonight. You know, because we really didn't believe it. Like, it really wasn't 
something we were expecting. Um, but I felt like something was off with her. So, you know, not off, but different. So I was in and out, you know, and at a certain point we did see she started to like shake. She started to cry a little, but I didn't know how long it was going to go on for. And I really needed to cook for Yantif. So she was giving birth in like the family room. She was whelping in the family room, which is a little bit off to the kitchen, to the side of the kitchen. And I told my daughter, my older one, I said, listen, you know, hang out with her. I'm going to be in and back and forth. Like if you start to see anything really intense, call me. And I would come back and forth with, um, you know, I would cook a little bit and then come back to the family room to see what was going on, make sure things were okay, and then go back. And my my daughter, Sarla, she was amazing. She was so, so, so amazing. Like, it, she was she was like a dog doula, a doggy doula. It's beautiful to see the videos. Anyway, I am cooking in the kitchen when suddenly I... <laughs> Sarla screams from the other room, Ma... There's a puppy out. So she was the one to witness the birth of Honey's first puppy. It was hard to see because she was kind of like on, you know, standing on all fours. And um, not on all fours. She was like on her hind legs. And I come to the pen. We turned the light on. We had turned the light off because we thought maybe, you know, with dim lighting, she'd feel more comfortable, which I do think helped. And there it was. It was just like laying there like she plopped the puppy out. Um, So that first puppy was born at 2.11. I woke up my husband and my son, my 11-year-old, he heard the commotion. And he's like the most attached to Honey out of all of us. So he got up and he was like, is she in labor? Is she in labor? Uh, So, yeah, it was it was really beautiful. I was not going to lie, I had a lot of nerves, much more for Honey than for, you know, the puppies. Obviously, I want the puppies to all be healthy and good, but Honey is our family dog, and we love her very, very, very much, and she's just a good dog. So I just wanted to make sure that everything was healthy with her. Um, And I didn't know how long it was going to go on for. They say, I heard it said that when you want to guesstimate how long your dog's labor is going to go on for, uh, guesstimate about an hour per puppy, because they can have anywhere between, you know, three minutes, one minute to two hours, up to two hours between puppies can be normal. So um, her first puppy came out. We know that she's having somewhere between 10 and 12 puppies. It's 2, 11 a.m. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to be at this for so long. Um, and I was anxious. Like, I just wanted everything to go well and smooth. But thankfully, she had about a 20 minute gap between puppies. And um, that was great. So, you know, dogs do some uh, things that are humans might find abominable, like uh, eating their placenta. Now, I know that some humans eat placenta, whatever, but um, we'll talk about that in another episode. But with dogs, it's next level. Like, she ate it like a steak. Um, And they say to limit them eating, you know, it's a normal, listen, it's a normal animal thing that, that animals do, that dogs do when they have their puppies they they eat the placenta but uh i heard you know i read that you should like kind of limit it after about three don't let them have it if you can avoid it because it gives them diarrhea and um so you know after about three i try to take it away from her and they they chewed the umbilical cord off for the most part there were like one or two puppies i was just a little concerned about i felt like they needed a little bit of extra resuscitation you know extra towel drying off to get them vigorous and crying so I clamped those umbilical cords um, and yeah, it was it was really beautiful. Um, by the time we got up to puppy number six, I was just falling off my face. Uh, I forgot what time it was, but I just it was like four something and I had been up for like 26 hours. Um, you know, I didn't sleep full shop this afternoon. I was literally not letting honey out of my sight. So my husband had been there and he saw what I was doing and you know I was just going upstairs to to sleep so I felt comfortable leaving him with the last three puppies um and so honey had a beautiful litter she had eight boys and the first three were boys I think number four was the girl um but it was so funny like one came out it was a boy the next came out it was a boy the next came out it was a boy and then I started questioning whether I knew how to tell a boy and girl puppy apart because you know the anatomy is very different when they're tiny little puppies um but indeed eight boys and just one girl 
were born. Um, and thankfully, her birth went really well. She finished whelping her last puppy at 6.43 a.m., so between two levels. So about, you know, four and a half hours. Um, that's really not bad. And I got, uh, how much sleep did I get? Like two and a half hours of sleep for me, which carried me through the rest of the day. Thankfully, I don't know how Hashem gave me the strength and I was able to make yantif. It was crazy. And thankfully you can cook on yantif. I usually don't like to cook on yantif, but in this case, I absolutely positively was going to cook on yantif. So, you know, I just made sure I had all the ingredients and yantif ended up being beautiful. And at the end of the day, I'm really happy that she gave birth before Um, Rosh Hashanah, because Rosh Hashanah, I was really able to spend a lot of time with the puppies, make sure that they were eating well and that they were doing everything that they were supposed to and spend a lot of time with Honey, who needed our extra love. So that is Honey's whelping story. I would love to tell you more about the puppies themselves and how the whole puppy care is going. Um, but I'm not, I'm going to have to save that for the next episode and I hope you all had a beautiful Rosh Hashanah for those of you who are celebrating. Um, and I'm sorry that I didn't wish you a Shana Tova, a Guka Bench Yar in the last episode. I didn't realize it was going to be my last episode before Rosh Hashanah. Um, I am going to be releasing a replay also of the episode I did last year about Yom Kippur fasting, both for pregnancy and for lactation. So look out for that. That's going to be episode 58, and it's going to be coming out shortly, uh, close to the release of this episode, because you need to start preparing in advance if you want to have a good fast on Yom Kippur. I know I'm sure that many of you are anxious and nervous I'm anxious and nervous and I'm not pregnant or fasting. So I totally get it, but you will have a good plan if you listen to this episode. So I highly encourage you to subscribe to the podcast um, or follow whichever platform you're listening to. Some it's called subscribe, some it's called follow, but do so because you'll get a notification when it is released, especially if you're not on social media. Um, And even if you're on social media, you don't always see everybody's accounts and things. So I do recommend that you follow or subscribe. I've actually myself been doing that more frequently with podcasts because I realized I forgot about a certain podcast and then I'll it'll pop into my head and I'll remember it. And I'll think like, why didn't it show up on my, you know, um, on my queue? And then I realize like, I'm not following these podcasts and I can't expect to remember every single name of every single podcast. Um, especially as my interests uh, broaden, like, you know, dog breeding. So I highly, again, recommend you subscribe or follow so you can look out for that episode, refer it to your friends and family who it may be helpful to, and stay tuned for part two, the continuation of Honey's postpartum um, recovery, and more than that, even how those cute, adorable puppies are doing because I am just in puppy heaven. They are just so cute. Oh, and uh, if you are someone who is interested in owning a dog or have been looking for a dog, you can actually go on to honeysgoldenpups.com. That's H-O-N-E-Y-S, golden as it's spelled, P-U-P-S, pups.com, to get more information of about the process um, and about applying for a pup. Her girl is taken already, and um, we have another two interested parties in two of her boys. So they are going. Um, they are not yet reserved. We have not finalized reservations for those two, but they are going. So if you're interested, if you know of anyone who might be interested, then you can go online. You can read more about uh, the process of acquiring a puppy. And I will see you soon. If I don't release part two before Yom Kippur, which actually I probably will not come to think of it again. I'm like in a, a Kimpeterheim, you know, a convalescent, uh, a convalescent mother baby home right now with these pups and making sure that they're eating and everything. I'll tell you more about it in the next episode. But um, I am not going to release another episode before Yom Kippur. So I wish all of you a Gemar Hasim Tova, um, all of you who celebrate Yom Kippur who are Jewish and who are fasting. I wish you an easy fast, a meaningful fast, and I will see you all again soon. Thank you.
Thanks for tuning into the Happy Birthway Podcast. Head over to Your Wedded Academy on Instagram to continue the conversation. You'll find the link in the episode show notes, as well as links to any additional resources, products, and services mentioned here. If you love listening to this show, you can help it grow by sharing it with your friends and rating and reviewing it. To stay in the loop when new episodes are released, make sure to subscribe. Remember that your health needs are unique and require individualized medical advice. The podcast is not a replacement and some of the information may not be appropriate for your specific circumstances. My mission is to educate you so that you can confidently collaborate with your healthcare team. I believe that a healthy mom and healthy baby are simply not enough. We also need a happy mom with an empowering birth experience. 